Right, now then my friends, interesting vlog today. I would say it's a quick one, but every time I say it's a quick vlog, it ends up being about 280 clips and about two hours long. So I'm not going to say that today. However, we are in Leeds. We're at Porsche Leeds. We're going to head all the way down the M1 South, all the way to London Covent Garden. You're going to see some sights along the way as well, which is going to be quite interesting. But before we go any further, do me a favour, hit the subscribe button. It doesn't cost you a penny. And what it does do is push this video out to YouTube to to educate other people that electric cars are not fit for purpose. They're a waste of time. It's just a way of stopping us, the public, and the minions, as they like to see us, from traveling around. So do it, hit the subscribe button. Honestly, won't cost you a penny. And also, sit back and enjoy the video, because it's going to be a good one. I'm going to show you exactly how much time it adds on to a journey in an electric car. Now, I'm at 45% at the moment. I've got 95 miles of range. It's 195 miles to my destination uh, in Covent Garden. It's 8.51 in the morning. It's saying that we're going to arrive at 12.48. We know that isn't going to happen because we've got about 40 minutes here or half an hour charging. I'm only going to charge to around 80% because that is the optimum capacity of a battery. After that, the battery charge is slower. We all know that. I've planned my journey. Well, hopefully, we're going to get to um, Milton Keynes Bus Depot where there's Ionity chargers, which are subsidised by uh, Porsche as well. So it's going to be an interesting one. So sit back, do hit the subscribe button. And uh, without further ado, my friends. Oh, by the way, I would say let's go. But the first thing that we are going to encounter, encounter is it's absolutely tipping it down and I'm going to get wet through. So this is a negative before we start. Well, two negatives because um, I'm now ready to go and get on the journey and get on the road, but I've got to charge. Now you're going to say, why didn't I charge before? Girlfriend's not got a charger at a house. That's where I'm at. So I couldn't charge and I was busy yesterday with the kids. Secondly, it's absolutely tipping it down. I'm going to get going to get wet through. But we all know anyway that electricity and water goes well together. So uh, that's why they don't put a canopy over any of them. Anyway, without further ado, my friends, let's go. Right, okay, first things first. We need to see I'm getting wet through. There's no canopy over the top. Uh, I've got I've got my uh, my Porsche charging card, so we're gonna use that. It says touch to start, and then we'll get it plugged in. Let's not mess around because I'm getting soaked. Right, okay. There we go, plug that in, get in there. Right, now I've got to wait just to make sure that it's uh, working. Initialising, morning, how you doing? Initialising, charging, uh, please wait. Come on, Porsche should give me an umbrella really, shouldn't they? I've got a BMW one in the car. Please wait, preparing, preparing. Come on, I'm getting wet through. <laughs> Why did they put canopies over these things? Ah, charging in progress. Here we go. Have a look at this. Right, there we go. 45%. Uh, what are we getting out of it? Voltage here. There we go. Okay, so what time are we on? 8.58. Okay, let's go and get a coffee. Right, that's charging. I shall just lock my car now. Hang on. Make sure it's locked in. That locks the charging point in. And then we've got that green car that I took out the other day. Look, there you go. I think that was the same one, wasn't it? The GTS, was it? Yeah, I think it was. These wheels, look at that. I mean, who chose them wheels? That's just wrong. Right, okay. See you in a bit. Tell you what, 
I'm gonna get inside now and have a, and have a coffee and get in the warmth and the dry. Right, before I enjoy my nice latte and uh, Belgian chocolate biscuits, I'm a bit partial. I do, I don't like electric cars, but I do like electric bikes. Just check this one out at a, a mere thirteen thousand pounds, a Porsche electric bike. Now, I'd like to test drive this one. Right, okay, so I've just checked, well, five minutes ago it was 80% uh, and it is now 9.42. So I think we'll unplug it and get on the road uh, because all you evangelists only charge to 80%. Right, let's get it unplugged and I'll tell you exactly how much it's cost me. Okay, wow, it's gone to 90% now. We'll click stop charging, there we go. Okay, it's actually charged pretty quickly from 80% to 90%. Right, energy delivered, charging time, 45 minutes, 91%. So 45 minutes. Come on, get out. Oh, I'm getting wet. Car's locked. Okay. There we go. Right. Put that back. That's odd because it let me stop charging. Well, it was still locked. There we go, pop that in. Right, so it's cost me uh, 33 pounds and 40 pence there. Uh, here's a transaction receipt on screen there to show you how many kilowatts I've got. 91% uh, of charge that we've got, 198 miles of range. Now, if I go into my sat nav here and then go to where we're going to go, um, it should get us there, but I do want to charge up before I get into the city so I've got enough uh, charge to get Let's out go. as well. Let's go, Turn come on. Right. 190 yeah because right it's going to be close 195 miles there but only 198 miles of range uh, so we're going to try and charge at milton Keynes depot which is one of the largest charging hubs uh, in the uk also got myself some water from porsche in there as well porsche leads uh, and also some more chocolate biscuits now i haven't stole them by the way i did ask them uh, and they know me in there by name they always say hi lee they're very nice in porsche leads they're always very welcoming and uh, i highly recommend porsche leads uh, if you want a porsche so there we go um so thank you porsche leads for the water and the biscuits they said we don't want you dehydrated on your way to london uh, along the way so there we go anyway so we're going to hit the road now it is 9 48 it says we're going to get there at half past one we know that's not going to be the case because we've probably got another 
40 minutes to charge plus i know where milton Keynes' charging point is uh, and that's about five six minutes out of the way off of the m1 as well so we're going to head there first and then into covent garden so uh, come on onwards my friends Right, the great British weather. It's raining again. Uh, so we've got uh, 179 miles of range. We're on the road now, 85% of battery. Uh, I've also plumbed in the stop at Milton Keynes at the charging hub there. It's 131 miles there, two hours, 18 minutes. So that's perfect. 131 miles, 179 miles of range. So all's good. Uh, it is like a little bus depot there as well. There is like a little restaurant uh, where you can see people. It's the National Express hub there. And uh, when I went with Sarah on the way back up to charge, you can actually sit in there uh, and watch people with the suitcases. It's, it's, she found it quite amazing actually. Um, she told me to be quiet, she went, sure. She said, what, what's the matter? She said, I'm just watching all the different people you know, coming through the hub on the National Express, coming from different places, etc. Uh, she found it quite interesting, so there we go. And I had, a, I think, a chocolate muffin and a cup of coffee. It was a huge chocolate muffin. I reckon, you know, that the coffee companies are definitely in on this electric car um, myth. It's, it's all a myth, isn't it, that we're going to get, we've got to have electric cars. I reckon they're in on this electric car scam, that's what I'll say. They're in on it. Starbucks, Costa, and uh, the other ones, other coffee companies are available. You know, put the coffee hubs there. What's it? They must have, their takings must have tripled, if not more. Anyway, uh, they, I may be wrong. That's just in my opinion, isn't it? And uh, anyway, let's get the road. I'm looking forward to this, London bound. I'm gonna see, hopefully, the rain will subside and you'll see some um, sights going through London as well. Come on, onwards. So first traffic jam uh, of the journey. Uh, I'll give you a little bit of uh, useless information here. I uh, believe, and you can correct me in that comment section down below if I'm wrong, that the M1 was the second main motorway that was built in the UK. Uh, that was after Preston. There was one in Preston, I believe, which is now part of the M62. But the M1 is probably the most important motorway in the United Kingdom. It joins London to Leeds, so it joins the south to the north really and uh, it was opened in stages i believe as well and uh, i spend a lot of my time on the m1 driving up and down the m1 all the time uh, and over the years it's probably it's probably one of the most congested motorways that i've ever come across it's absolutely insane uh, it's crazy but you can pop it in the comment section down below it was opened in stages and i think the first one did it go to watford or something watford gap you'll have to let me know i mentioned on another video as well about service stations etc i've always found them intriguing service stations as of late they're all pretty much the same they've got the same things mcdonald's uh kentucky fried chicken burger kings greg's or whatever and they're always overpriced they're absolutely insanely priced they sell pointless things in the shops there as well like the orange sunglasses or the yellow sunglasses and you can get all sorts of different things picnic blankets then you've got your mobile phone case shops in there as well but years ago you used to have proper restaurants in there with dinner ladies behind them and i can say dinner ladies uh, because that's what they, they were back then. You used to have dinner ladies in there with the hair nets on, serving up the food, and you'd go in. I used to, I did, I went to some with my mum and dad. And from memory, they were better places back then. From, you know, now we've just got the franchises, but you had different ones, and they served fish and chips, and sausage and chips, and, you know, an array of different things. It was a little bit like school dinners, but at a service station. And now, you don't really get that, do you? It's just franchises that you go into. There's no sort of like cafes. 
I wonder if I can find a picture. If I can find a picture, I'll put a picture over over the top here. But if not, and uh, let me know if you've got one as well, and uh, just pop it on the uh, pop it on my uh, Mac, official MacMaster Facebook page if you've got that. But um, or pop, pop a link in and uh, in the description. I just found them way better, way better back then. Everything is the same. It's just uniform now. We seem to have lost. We've lost something haven't we in modern times we really have we've lost we've, even with electric cars there's no soul there's no character there's nothing and it's the same with service stations everything's just gone it's just the same but there we go i think it's fond memories it's like it's coming up to christmas when i'm filming this and my fond memories of commercials on tv of um, qc quiet christmas and all the christmas commercials come on and now it's just they're all the same we've just lost something i'm glad i grew up in the generation in the years that i actually did throughout the 70s and 80s throughout the 90s i think we kind of started to lose it a little bit it was the 90s the late 90s where everything just started to go downhill what do you think let me know in that comment section i keep saying in that comment section down below but you know just let me know pop it in the comments and uh, let me know when you think that we started losing it at what era at what year oh i know what i meant to say i've said before a million times so i'm not going to go over it i've said our electric cars basically look like a bogey that you've picked from your nose in fact that's probably more attractive than any electric car obviously the Taycan's a nice looking electric car but other than that and the Audi uh, e-tron or whatever it is the rest of them basically look awful um, now they've ruined even really good cars because the Ford Mustang we've seen that you've got the old Ford Mustang the classic one that looks fantastic the new electric Ford Mustang looks abysmal. Whoever drew that should be uh, they, they, they should be put into a stock and have mushy peas thrown at them because it is foul. And now they're going to ruin. This is Ford again. They're going to ruin my favourite ever car, my ultimate car, my the love of my life is the Ford Capri. The original Ford Capri, well, the Mark 1 and Mark 2, and now Ford are going to bring it back, but as an electric car. Now, you'd think, if they got this right, we've said this with Jeff, I said this to Jeff Buys Cars, and he said, he said, if they got it right, you imagine how many of those EVs that they would actually sell if they got the Ford Capri right, an electric version of it, redesigned to look modern with all the modern airbags and safety features, etc. But it looked absolutely gorgeous like the old one, even better than the old one, but electric. Okay, it's a downside, it's electric, but still, if they got it right, it would sell like hotcakes. And I've seen the design of it, and whoever designed it, I'm, I'm not, <laughs> it's comical. It looks awful. I've been out on a Friday night, had doner kebabs, drank lots of lager, threw up when I got back, seen it on the carpet the next morning, and that is bet that's more attractive to look at than the new Ford Capri electric car. Honestly, it's foul. What are they doing? Are they doing it to stop us from buying cars? Just do it whatever you want. We don't want them, we don't want the minions to buy cars anyway. We'll price them out of it. We don't want them on the roads. It's just it's crackers, isn't it? It's complete madness. They're ruining everything. Anyway, so there we go. The Ford Capri, they've ruined it. The Ford Mustang, they've ruined it. What next? What next? What, what other classic car can they ruin?
Now then, question for you here. Question. Question. Right? Um, I've used the word wing mirrors on my car and I've got picked up on it a couple of times saying, what era are you from? They've not been called wing mirrors for years. Apparently they're door mirrors or something. I've always known them as wing mirrors. Uh, am I am I am I wrong? Are they not wing mirrors anymore? D door mirrors? I mean, they've always been wing mirrors to me. So I'm going with wing mirrors. I don't know. That's just what I've grown up with. They're wing mirrors. Let me know in that comment section. Also, as well, I've been driving along here, and I love nostalgia. Lots of people love. Well, everybody loves nostalgia, don't they? Because everything was better back in the day. Uh, on the way down over the last few miles, I've just been listening to. Uh, a uh, podcast about Doctor Who. I was a massive Doctor Who fan when I was a kid and I'm just thinking about nostalgia and also nostalgic adverts about cars etc from years ago and that was going through my head. Do you remember obviously the uh, the think one, think once, think twice, think bike. Think once, think twice, think bike. Do you remember that advert? Uh, on the TV, it was like a info, uh, it's a, a not a commercial. What do you call it? It's a public service announcement or whatever it is. And there was think once, think twice, think bike. There was also one as well um, that was only a fool breaks the two second rule. Remember, only a fool breaks the two second rule. Do you remember that one? Can you remember any others? I remember one. Uh, I'm sure it was a. I'm sure it was real. It was don't cross. Don't mix cross-ply with radial. If you mix cross-ply and radial tyres on the same axle, or use cross-ply on the rear when you've radials on the front, you might not live to regret it. And it was a maxi car or something, I think it was. Maxi or something like that. All those public service commercials, absolutely loved them and there was lots about cars. Um, let me know if you remember any other obscure ones that I've missed out. Um, there was also, was it clunk click on every trip with... Clunk click every trip. I think that was with a certain person that, who is best named, uh, left nameless. <laughs> uh, I'm pretty sure anyway, we'll leave that one out. Um, but there was lots and lots of other ones as well. And I, it's just, things were way better back in the day or is it just me i don't know anyway there we go just just daft things that's going around my head about commercials on cars etc and also who remembers all the car commercials that they used to have as well back in the day uh, when they used to advertise the uh the austin austin the austin maestro the miracle maestro driving is believing and the Austin Montego. The first car ever selected to carry the design center label. The Austin Montego. Designed for living. Oh, just fantastic days, brilliant days. And the Ford, the Ford Capri, I think I remember that commercial as well. It was just, it was just brilliant, wasn't it? Anyway, come on. I have, it's nothing to do with electric cars, but I'll tell you what is to do with electric cars. I'm going to stop at the gateway down at uh, Milton Keynes, uh, which is in 48 miles. However, I'm going to stop before that at the services because I need a wee and you have to pay to have a wee at the uh, Milton Keynes services in the bus station, in the coach station there. We're not paying. That's taking the pee that is isn't it literally come on onwards Right, so I'm just pulling in for a comfort break, or uh, as we like to say in Mansfield, 
I'm having a wee. I'm having a whiz. Uh, I'm going to the low, little boy's room. Uh, <laughs> I need to relieve my bladder. Now, funnily enough, though, I've pulled in uh, probably, I'm going to say, the most famous service station of all time, right? Let me turn this milk float off. Uh, lots of people asking what a milk float is, by the way. Probably people from America, etc. Um, here's a picture of a milk float. Um, it's uh, an electric vehicle that used to deliver our milk bottles uh, when I was a child. Uh, and uh, in the end, they got rid of them because they didn't work, because they were rubbish, basically. They kept breaking down and they didn't have much range. Uh, pretty much like electric cars. Um, where was I? Uh, so, Watford Gap. Yes, one of the most famous service stations, if not the most famous st service station in the whole of the United Kingdom. Uh, I think, uh, as I said, I think the Beatles have been here. Uh, a few other famous rock stars as well. Um, I think one of them thought it was a nightclub. There is plans and talks, I believe, of this being knocked down and being rebuilt, etc., uh, as an electric charging hub. Um, there's some grid serve ones over there with nobody on them. I don't know whether they're working or not. Uh, but anyway, th so there you go, Watford Gap. It is where the north-south divide is because Londoners think that anything above Watford Gap is basically the north. So it is kind of famous. Anyway, uh, I'm going to go in there, have a wee, and then we'll get back on the road and go to the electric charging hub at... Um, uh, at Milton Keynes, which is based upon, that's a whole not, lot, another story, Milton Keynes. It's basically a grid system, isn't it, like New York? And it's also where Superman 4 was filmed, and they had that as the backdrop of New York, and it never really worked. I saw that, probably the worst Superman ever. Anyway, I'm babbling, come on. So, a couple of people on the charges there, actually, there's some new grid serve ones here. Let's have a look over here. And none of them are in use. So I don't know why they're using them ones over there, because I believe these ones are actually higher powered. I don't know why they're actually using them ones over there, to be fair, because, oops, getting in the way of the MG here. Uh, in fact, I hope they don't recognize me. These evangelists want to get out of here. This one's interesting. Garden Square Deli and chosen authentic Asian food. Well, look at this. Kind of a strange place that isn't it? it sells bagels and then chinese food it kind of know what it is fish and chips full english breakfasts kind of an amalgamation of um everything doesn't know what it is it's confused right bathroom actually buys these night vision glasses. Why? <laughs> right, back to the Mac Mobile. Come on, onwards. Oh, right, let's get back on the road. Uh, got a little problem with my screen there, actually. My passenger display it's flashing so there must be an issue with that i think i might have to get the car booked in again which means i get a uh, another car on test where is this person going where are you going don't reverse back into me where are you get where are they i don't like these car parks i have to say right let's get back on the road people reversing out come on okay come on onwards
Right, okay, so that's annoying. I can see my passenger screen flashing like this. Uh, hopefully it'll reset itself. If not, and I'm gonna have to book it back in again. Uh, so we have got 29% of uh, charge, 59 miles of range, 11 miles to Milton Keynes, uh, to the place where we're gonna go and charge. And then once we charge there, that should take about half an hour. So basically, if you count the time this morning uh, at uh, Porsche Leeds, that's probably about 40 minutes there, plus another 40 minutes here. So it's already adding an incredible amount of time onto your journey, uh, which is not brilliant, but anyway. So I'm gonna charge up, uh, have a coffee, and uh, and then um, back on the road again and get to London. And as I say, well, the rain's baiting a little bit, so we should be able to show you a few sights along the way. See a little bit of, uh, bit of a little bit of England's capital, the capital of England, London. Right, so now, got to find the coachway, which is around here somewhere, apparently. Third exit, let's move over. I don't like this, this is why I like to just pull into a service station, charge up and go. I don't like to get off of a place and then have to go round roundabouts, take different junctions. Uh, I think it's round here from memory. Here we go. Uh, now I've got to go to another roundabout. And this is why, I've missed these before and I've just used the chargers uh, on the M1. Now it's down here, here we go, I think. Yeah, yeah, okay, here we go, coachway. So hopefully they will be available because I want to use the Ionity chargers, uh, which are, oh, bus lane, one second, and bus lane cameras. Um, I want to use the Ionity chargers. Where am I going here? Cars, parking. Milton Keynes coachway, am I going the right way here? Turn Cars? Turn uh, right. From memory it's round here somewhere. Uh, I want to use Ionity anyway because it's subsidised and I think they're round here. I think anyway. Where is it? Right, so all the Ionity chargers are actually taken up. We've got BP Pulse, which is 50 kilowatt there, uh, but I want the Ionity ones. So, and there's a guy waiting in a Polestar there. Polestar, sounds like a exotic dancer, doesn't it? But How can I help you? What are you, what, what are you doing? Uh, sounds like an ex, what's all that about? Stop listening to me. Sounds like an exotic dancer, doesn't it? But when you look at it, it looks more like, who can, I, who can I say? Probably, I don't know, I'm trying to think of somebody, maybe Hattie Jakes or something, dancing there or whatever. Or Ina Sharples, that's it. Ina Sharples in stockings and suspenders. But no, look at it, it's an awful car. Right, I'm gonna be waiting a while here. See, this is the charging point that last time I did a video going up the M1, and I stopped off at a place and it was all busy. Somebody went to me, I think you're fine. You should have got gone to um, the uh, coach uh, way at Milton Keynes. There's lots of charges there. Yes, and they're taken up now as well. Evangelists. Right, is he going in? Are you going in? Is he going in? Two coming out actually. Okay, well I'm going in. He's going in, he's going in one. Get in there, Polestar. Right, milk float off. Let's go and charge up. Oh, in fact, let's put the milk float back on again. Uh, so I'll tell you what we're at. 55 miles of range, 25% of battery, um, 1.51 p.m. So work it all out. I'm gonna charge up and we'll also see uh, as well how much it's cost. And that screen flickering is really annoying me now. So come on, milk float off uh, and let's get out of here. 
Right, so first things first, please insert plug into vehicle. That's what I'm doing. Start. Put my Porsche card on there. Authorization confirmed. Preparing to charge. Setting up communication with the car. Preparing to charge. Setting up communication with the car. Come on. It's it's spitting and it's drizzling and getting wet. Setting up communication with the car. This is where your stomach turns. Will it or won't it? Is it going to work? Yes, it is. We're on. So then I can nip into there, get myself a coffee. Need another wee and I think it's about 20 pence to have a wee in there. Uh, here we go anyway, it's charging. So what is it now? 157. Come on onwards. Right, so had a coffee, had a uh, chicken salad baguette thing there, and a grab bag of uh, prawn cocktail crisps. You get to learn uh, the shape of prawn cocktail crisps while you're charging your car. Uh, come to £8.55. Didn't even get any Vaseline with it. Anyway, I shall uh, sit and watch. This is what my girlfriend Sarah loved, loved it when she was here last time. Sat in the corner and she just sat watching people and uh, people watching, going in and out. Uh, onto the National Express. Love that song, by the way, National Express. Who sang that? Triff question for you. Pop it in the comment section down below. Right, I'm going to eat these. I'll see you in a minute. Right, let's go and see what the car's at. Um, by the way, I needed a wee again and I had to go. 30 pence to get in. Didn't take contactless, I hadn't got any coins. So the uh, lovely lady in there just opened it up with a key and says, in you go, uh, away you go. So I got a free wee, get in. The day's getting better. Right, so there's a guy waiting over there, it's 82%. So do you know what? I'm going to do the gentlemanly thing, part of the EV community, and I'm going to leave because I've charged, oh, it's 83% now. So uh, I'll unplug it and then let this guy get in. Right, okay, so um, Ionity, £15.23 in total there, uh, 31 minutes charging time uh, and 50.77 kilowatts. So Ionity, uh, quite cheap, I have to say, it is subsidised, as I say. So uh, we're going to get back on the road now uh, and get to London. We've now got another hour and 30, excuse me, hour and 31 that term. <laughs> crisps and the baguettes repeating on me um an hour and 31 minutes uh two minutes past four arrival time roughly uh, i'm going to spend another 15 minutes here because i just need to make a phone call and do something uh, but then we'll get back on the road so i'll see you guys in a minute
Right, so back on the road. Uh, 82%, 174 miles. We're all good, only 48 miles to go. So we'll probably charge up on the way back at uh, Milton Keynes again. Uh, fairly quick charger, also fairly cheap as well. Uh, as I say though, it was funny because the last time I went up the M1, somebody says, oh, you should have gone there. Lots of charges there, but they were in service and there were people on them when I actually got there, which is always an issue and you never really know that. Um, what I want a quick word about is the amount of negativity that I actually get on the videos from the EV community, from the evangelists, is phenomenal, it's unbelievable. Just go through and read some of the comments. I get abuse, I get nastiness, I get v verbal abuse, literally, and sometimes of it, sometimes it's actually quite personal. These evangelists are very passionate about their electric cars, and I just don't understand because at the end of the day, it is just a car, it's just a vehicle with four wheels on it. How can you get so passionate about a car and be so vocal about it? I'm just pointing out the negatives and, and the minuses, positives and minuses, of owning an electric car. And I've never said it at any point that they that do not buy one. I've said do your own research because I think that they may be not for you if you're trying to use it. Uh, what's going on here? Put my hazards on, I think. Slowing down. Uh, just do your research first because for long distances uh, and normal everyday use, I personally don't believe that they're fit for purpose. But if you're going to potter to the shops and, you know, go and have your hair done or whatever, great. Get yourself a little electric car. I think they're perfect. But making bigger electric cars is just it just doesn't make sense and uh, that's where i'm coming from so i hope you're enjoying the videos if you are just give them a thumbs up and also share them on social media and let's educate other people about electric cars and you've got to show the negative side of things as well as the positives so i'm showing the negative sides the positives are it's cheaper if you charge at home for now but that'll change won't it Oh, and another positive, there we go. I'm going into London, central London. Congestion charge, I don't have to pay it. Um, low emission zone, I don't have to pay it. The congestion charge, however, what I do disagree with is that you have to register this car uh, to so that you don't have to pay the congestion charge. Now, they should already know that with your number plate. So answer me that question, evangelists. Why should I have to register to uh, be, what's the word? So I don't, basically I don't have to pay the congestion charge. Uh, they should, I shouldn't have to do that. It's like trying to catch you out, isn't it? Oh, I've got an electric car, I can go into London in the congestion charge and you get a fine because you've not, you know, registered it uh, as an electric car. It seems a bit of a swindle that, doesn't it? Or is it just me? There's gotta be a reason behind it, hasn't there? But who knows? Anyway, come on, onwards. Right, welcome to London. This, my friends, is where I can appear smug because I'm not paying the congestion charge or the ultra low emission zone. Oh, stop for the traffic lights though. Um, I suppose that's a good thing about electric cars. However, I think eventually what will happen is that the ultra low emission zone and congestion charge will probably 
I could be wrong, end up as charge per mile, so that anybody who does have an electric car, they can still take money off of you. So eventually, we all know that electric cars won't be free in the city of London, uh, in my opinion, I have to say that. But, uh, you know, it's, it's gonna happen, isn't it? You just, everybody has an electric car, right, in the future, if everybody has an electric car, they're not still gonna go, oh well, no congestion charge, uh, no you, Les, uh, you can drive around for free, everything's cool. It's not gonna happen, is it? We know that's coming, we know. Maybe I'm wrong. Anyway, that's, you got the wrong traffic lights there, mate. He's going, because that's it, we can go, onwards. Twenty mile an hour speed limit as well, by the way, uh, with a sign up there. Working to make London's roads safer and more profitable, in my opinion. He's not doing twenty. Right, milk flow off, um, so the screen stopped flickering now by the way. Let me get out of the car, then we'll wind this up and I'll tell you uh, my summary basically of the drive from Leeds to London uh, in an electric car and what I actually thought of it. So let me just turn it, let me get out of the car anyway, come on. Right, okay, so parked up the, uh, the milk float off to Covent Garden Travel Lodge now, uh, which I'm gonna do a review on as well and the breakfast as well, so keep an eye out for that one. Are these lights gonna keep going on and off? Um, my verdict on the journey from Leeds to London down the M1. Uh, well, I can tell you what, it's added uh, a lot of time onto it, hasn't it? It's like a disco in here. Just stay on. What are we going to do? Do a dance. Um, it's, um, I mean, I'm saving power. Look at it on and off like a yo-yo. Anyway, um, it, ta it took more time uh, because of having an electric car. It adds onto the journey. It doesn't matter how you do it, how you look at it you're going to add time onto your journey if you've got an electric car. Even if you plan your journey, it doesn't matter. You're adding time onto your journey. And also cost, because you end up having coffees, a bite to eat, etc. Unless you pack your own sandwiches and cut the crusts off into little triangles. Um, it's just uh, absolute madness. And also, uh, in London as well, 20 mile an hour speed limit, a little bit like Wales, all the way through, absolute nightmare. Speed bumps, cameras, bus lane cameras, bike lane cameras, uh, intersection cross box cameras. You cannot go anywhere. They hate the motorist, in my opinion. And uh, I think with electric cars, 20 mile an hour speed limits, etc., cameras everywhere, I think personally, it's the beginning of the end uh, for the uh, person on the street driving cars at all because pricing you out with the electric cars and also with all the cameras and the speed bumps it's quite clear to me in my opinion that they don't really want you to drive at all they want you to stay within a certain area or take public transport um but i could be wrong uh, but then again like my dad used to say i've only ever been wrong once and that's when i thought i was wrong but i wasn't so think about that one and i'll leave that one with you do hit the subscribe button click the little bell for notifications when i upload new videos is this light going to go on and off all night and that's all from me today i hope you enjoyed the video and the journey with me and i'll see you guys in the next one for goodness sake i've got to get out of here bye bye Thank <laughs> you.